what it is, what it was, what it could be, y'all. Welcome back to Disc Golf Justice. Today we're gonna be taking a look at what disc I bag after playing disc golf for one year. If you're new to the channel, first of all, consider subscribing, I really appreciate it. But I'm a very amateur disc golfer. I would say my max distance is about 450 feet, and but I'm more realistically throwing about 390 to 420 feet on average. I currently bag 24 discs. Now three of those are my putting putters, and honestly five of these are kind of like utility discs that could be removed and I'd be able to play just fine. But I feel like I've finally gotten like the perfect bag in terms of molds. Now, depending on your arm speed, you may have to change the disc. Some disc may be too stable for you or too flippy for you. But I feel like I got the slots narrowed down so that I can show up to any course and be able to execute and not blame the disc at least. It'll be my own fault, my lack of skill. So without wasting any further time, we'll start with my putting putters. I put with the Prodigy PA3s. These are very popular putting putters. These are in the 350G plastic. I bag three of them in three different colors colors. The white one is for when I'm in C2 or long range. This is my long range sniper. I put a, It's got a scope on it. 30 out 6 right here. Kabang right into the chains. Then when I'm on circle's edge just outside the circle I bring out the black ninja star right here. Throw at them like a katana right into the chains. Anytime I'm inside the circle I got to use old pumpkin spice latte right here and put it in the basket. If I put with any of these colors outside of their designated slot they will not find the basket. But if you use them appropriately Every single time, they'll go in 60% of the time. So there we go, putting putters are the PA3s. I love them. They have a really good combination of glide and stability. You can kind of just play catch is what I do. Just throw them up there, let them fade into the basket. Works really well. Moving on to my throwing putter slash approach disc. I back four of them. I have my understable throwing putter slot. I don't use this as often anymore. I just the plastic's a bit slick and it's kind of made me lose confidence in it. And Honestly, I should probably take it out of the bag since I don't have that same confidence with it anymore, but I just love the disc so much. It's like a perfect ace run disc whenever you have a short hole, but yeah, I just sometimes run into slipping issues. But I like to put this on the hyzer flip line or like a turnover if I'm trying to do like a soft turnover putter shot. That's when I'll bring out the trash panda. Very rarely gets used anymore though. My main throwing putter is the MVP MV. I got this in the Eclipse plastic. I just like how I can give this a full rip and not really worry about it turning over, even if there's a little bit of a headwind. Like this thing is pretty reliable, nice and straight point and shoot putter. I bring the MV out on most holes that are like sub 300 feet, more like 280 foot range. I really like to throw this MV. For my overstable throwing putter slash approach disc, I use the Discraft Zone. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know I had the Get Freaky in the bag for a long time, pretty much my entire disc golf career, this entire year. But very, very recently, I took the Get Freaky out because I've been playing more and more with this ESP and I like the skip it gives. It's like an extra bit of stability. Plus I like how firm it is in my hand. It's not so malleable, particularly on forehands. I can get a good grip. So I decided to take the Get Freaky out completely, leave this ESP zone in the bag. However, a new addition, something that I've been playing around with, but I didn't know if it would ever actually make the bag, the Discraft Zone OS. This is just the uh, test flight one that Discraft sent out to me. I don't bother getting the, one of the first run ones or anything, just because this has a lot of nostalgia. It's really cool that they sent this out to me, so I'll keep this in the bag now. Very late addition. Did some field work with it, took the Get Freaky out, replaced it with the Zone OS. So those are my throwing putters, understable, straight, overstable, and then very overstable. Moving on to mid-ranges, I actually bag five mid-ranges, which is kind of rare for most players. Not a lot of people bag five mid-ranges, I feel like. But honestly, two of these mids could easily be taken out. There are more utility. One of them's not necessarily utility, but it, it, it only gets used in special occasions, which is a utility. So I bag an understable mid, and in that slot, I have the Dismadium Mindbender. I really love this disc. It has a beautiful flight to it. I put it on that hyzer line, and it just has such a late flip to it where it just comes up to flat pushes may turn over a little bit i absolutely love the hand feel on it feels phenomenal in the hand great hyzer flip disc for my straight mid-range i use the tsa pathfinder shout out to overthrow disc golf who put me on this he commented on one of my videos told me to try to pathfinder and honestly i really liked it. i like the hand feel of it i love this first of all this pink color y'all will notice that every single disc in my bag is either pink purple blue or white so and i this is my favorite shade of pink too I really love this disc. Put it on flat, it'll go flat. Put it on a smidge of ante, it'll pan to the right and come out of it. Like this is like a buzz. If you know what a buzz flies like, this flies like a buzz, but 
I don't know, I just like the hand feel a little bit more. I like the plastic a little bit more. And it has really good glide as well. Glide slash stability. It's not overstable by any means, but it has very good glide to it. it can go pretty far for a mid-range. That brings me to the MVP reactor. This is in the Eclipse Plastic as well. This is one of the utility ones. It doesn't get used a lot, but it's very good at going completely dead straight on a windy day. If you got a pretty good headwind, it's just got that little bit more stability than say like a Hex or the Lozado, you know? Like I think this is the better of the two, like the Lozado or the Reactor. I just like the Reactor's stability. It holds straight and then has just a little bit of finish. And if it's very windy, you got a strong headwind, this will hold dead straight. So on holes where I would normally use a Pathfinder, but I got too much headwind or it's a windy day, I'll bring out the Reactor. Stepping up a little bit more in stability, I bagged the RPM Katuku. This is in the uh, Cosmic Plastic. This is 180 grams too, so it's quite stable. It's got a good combination of glide and stability as well. You notice that'll be a common thing with a lot of my discs. I like things that can glide far, but still have that stability to them. I like to be able to rely on them. So if we're on a hole that requires like a mid-range type shot and I don't want to worry about it flipping up at all, or I just want to put on hyzer and know it's going to reliably fade or or stick because this cosmic plastic also sticks really well. That's when I'm bring out the uh, Katuku. It gets used quite a bit more often than I thought this disc would. I honestly use this probably once or twice around. It's a pretty useful mid-range. And last but not least, how could I not bag a dynamic disc Justice? How are you gonna be named Justice and not bag the Justice? This is definitely a utility disc for me. Only gets used on very windy days or again, if I for sure want it to go left when I'm throwing backhand or go right when I'm throwing forehand. Or if I want to keep something low and have a monster skip around like a mando or some trees or something, that's when I'm bring out this Justice. It's crazy overstable. Y'all know how the Justice flies, ridiculously stable. I think the one glide rating on the Justice is quite a lie though. It definitely has more than one glide. Like if you compare it to the Mutant, which is a very good comparison, the Mutant I think has one glide. This glides a lot further than a mutant. It's not going to go crazy far, but I can get this to go, you know, 260, 270 feet. That wraps up my mid-ranges again. I could get away with just using the Mindbender, the Pathfinder, and the Katuku, honestly. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it, you know, and I don't have a crazy amount of discs. Like I said, 24, including my three putting putters. Moving on now to seven-speed fairway drivers. I bag four of them. One of them is definitely a utility disc. This only gets used on very rare occasions. We'll start with it. It's my most understable, the West Side Disc Underworld, crazy flippy disc. This only gets used when I have like a really low ceiling and I'm trying to get a roller down. I, I really only use it when I want to get a roller down on the backhand or forehand. Up next is the Latitude 64 River. I really like this disc for like a hyzer flip turnover. Great, this doesn't get used on a windy day at all, but if it's a calm day or you got a little bit of a tailwind, this, the river, there's nothing like it. That seven glide is no joke. It honestly just goes and goes and goes. You put it on a bit of hyzer, depending on your elevation and this and that, the wind, it'll flip up, drift, turn over, maybe fight out a little bit at the end, but Wow, I just, I've always been blown away by how far the river goes. Stepping up a notch in stability is the Discraft Stalker. I have this in the Z plastic. It's a pretty late addition to the bag, but man, this is quickly becoming one of my favorite discs to throw. It has a terrible name. They should definitely change the name or they should have thought of a different name when they came up with this, but you put this on a bit of hyzer and it just pops up to flat and goes dead straight. And if you got a bit of a headwind, it doesn't really seem to mind. It may turn over a little bit, but Man, I've just been really impressed with this stalker. It's like perfect for my arm speed for a hyzer flip dead straight. It fights the wind surprisingly well. That's what I've always been most impressed with. Like I don't have to be completely scared to bring this out on a windy day. It doesn't get a lot of action on a windy day, but I don't have to be completely scared to bring it out. And then another late addition to the bag, and this is for when I am too afraid to throw the stalker, but I still need that seven speed shot. Or if I just want to throw something on hyzer and for sure know it's going to, you know, come back and fade out of that, I got the Dismania F. D1. I like the hand feel to it. The plastic's nice. Uh, it was a fight between this and the Latitude 64 um, Explorer and the Optoplastic. They felt the exact same to me, but I put a poll up on one of my Instagram stories and people chose the FD1. So the FD1 is the one that made the bag and it hasn't let me down since. So there we have my four seven speed drivers. Moving on to my nine speed fairway drivers. I only bag three of these. Two of them are the same disc, just in different plastics. Starting with my more understable nine speed, I got the Discraft Undertaker in ESP plastic. This is the uh, McBeast 6X you know, Undertaker. Really like the pop top on this run. Has a really nice glide to it with a late stability to it, but if it's windy day, this doesn't get brought out 
too often. This is definitely a workhorse disc for me, but if I got some sort of headwind, I get scared to throw it. I can put it on hyzer and it'll pop up to flat and go dead straight, but once in a while it'll turn over on me. And yeah, if there's a windy day, this doesn't get a lot of use. But on a calm day, this is like my workhorse fairway driver. On days that got a little bit more wind, I bring out the dynamic disc, Ricky Raisaki, Raptor Eye Felon. This, this felon is a little bit flippier than uh, my other felon, so I can put it on a bit of hyzer. Even on a calm day, I can put this on some hyzer, it'll pop up to flat and then have a reliable finish. And then on a windy day, I put on hyzer, pop up to flat and just go dead straight. So it complements the McBeast Undertaker very well on a windy day. And then if the wind is even crazier or if I just want to throw like a hyzer and for sure know it's going to fade or for my forehands, I use this disc a lot on my forehands because I don't have that great a form and overstable disc can help get rid of your flutters. I know you're not supposed to do that, but here we are. The dynamic disc uh, Saki Bomb Felon. This is the Orbit Supreme, Supreme Orbit, that's what it is, Felon. Um, this is a very late addition to the bag as well. But I just like that touch more stability it's got over my uh, Orbit Fusion Felon that I was bagging. And even in a headwind, I put this on like a Heiser flip line. I can't get it to pop up like I could the Orbit Fusion or this Raptor Eye Felon. So this has been a late addition, but a very welcomed addition to the bag. And last but not least, moving on to the big guns, the stuff y'all really want to see. What distance drivers in my bag in? I only bag five distance drivers and three of them are the same exact disc just in different plastics so starting with my understable option I bag the clash disc wild honey this disc doesn't get used very often it's it's one of them touchy discs where you're afraid to use it because it's yeah it's touchy but if you do get the angle right on this and judge the wind correctly and the elevation everything correctly this disc absolutely bombed it's by far the furthest flying disc I've ever got my hands on it's just that it's so dang touchy so uh, a lot of times I'm reluctant to use it unless I know for certain there's no way that's going to turn over on me or you know whatever I'm trying to get out of it. And for my workhorse distance driver, I use the uh, MVP Photon and I bag actually three of them, three different plastics. I got one in the Fission plastic that's 166 grams. This is like my go-to. I use this for pretty much most tee shots if I'm throwing a driver, if it's a calm day. I'll put this on a little bit of hyzer, pop up to flat, drift a little bit, or I can throw it relatively flat. My flat shots come out with a bit of hyzer and it'll just it'll just go. It's a very far flying disc. Even in this lightweight, I don't know what it is about MVP, but their lightweight discs do not care. <laughs> they still have a lot of reliable stability in them. Matter of fact, up until recently, this next Photon that's in the Neutron plastic was my most overstable disc in my bag, and it's 163 grams. So I don't really know what the overmold technology does, how it makes it more stable and that, but yeah, they just, they're reliable. This pink one gets used when it's a very windy day, or if again, I need something that's gonna reliably fade, I'll bring out the pink one. However, this Neutron plastic is very slick, so a lot of times when my hands get sweaty, I don't like using it on forehands, which is when I bring out this uh, Proton plastic Photon. And this is the only disc in my bag that is not pink, purple, blue or white, it's random red, I should probably replace it. But this is probably the most stable of the photons, to be honest. It is max weight, I think this one's like 165 or 175 grams, but it's just got a little bit more grip on the forehand for me, and it's got a little bit more stability on the backhand as well. And the last disc, but certainly not the least in my bag, this has quickly become one of my favorite discs to throw fairly late addition to the bag helped me win my first ever disc golf tournament the rpm katori whenever i'm not throwing one of these photons or i need something that i know for sure is going to fade i don't care if it's a damn tornado going on out there this thing is gonna fade that's when i bring out the rpm katori it's just so reliably stable at first i thought a disc like this would have no use in my bag but it's quickly become more and more use like if there's a mando right of a tree and then the basket's hard to the right and i'm trying to throw a forehand or just any shot that i need to keep low and have a ridiculous skip, you know, a ridiculous finish, I'll bring out the, the Katori. It doesn't go crazy far. It's not gonna, cause it's so stable, it's not gonna have mad distance to it. But yeah, if you need something that is gonna fade, and I mean fade, look no further than the RPM Katori. This is the best disc in the game hands down. Well, there you have it, folks. All 24 discs that I bag. I think I finally narrowed it down to like the perfect mold selection. The discs may have to change for you, but there's no need to have any more discs than this. Honestly, I could take out two of my putting putters. I could take out the MVP reactor, the Justice. I could probably take out the Trash Panda inner core. I could take out the West Side Underworld, and I could probably take out the Zone OS. So I could probably get this down to like 17 discs or so, but honestly, I like being prepared for any situation. I don't bring all these discs on every event I go 
to, but if I can, I will. I'm very curious what you guys think of the discs that I've acquired. I've reviewed quite a few discs in the past year, and this is what I've came down to for my arm speed, but I'm very curious what y'all think I'm missing or what discs you really like that I bag. Let me know down in the comments, and if you guys enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a big old thumbs up. If you want to see more, make sure you smash that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future content, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.